Well, that's how an average day in the life of a Thar looks like. Lots of muck, lots of water splashing about and lots of bumping around off-road. But a Thar that's meant to be clean, a Thar that's meant to be driven only in the city and above all, a Thar that's meant to be two-wheel drive. I mean, what is happening right here? Okay, so you'd probably ask what's the point of a Thar if you don't have four-wheel drive, if you're not going to go off-roading. Well, to be honest, there is a big market that doesn't really want to engage in extreme off-road stuff, that doesn't really want that four-wheel low and four-wheel high, is very content with the overall Thar, but they also like that butch presence, they like the street credit it gets, and they like the way it feels out on the road. So yes, there is a big market for this Thar as well. We drove the petrol auto and diesel manual combinations. The 2 litre petrol first, since there has been no change to the engine and gearbox. And that means performance is, well, to be honest, very, very brisk. 0 to 100 is under 10 seconds, and even the kickdown times are quick too. Well, that of course you can attribute to the less weight because it doesn't have to lug around a four wheel drive system. But overall, the car does feel zippier. Thanks to the reduced weights, performance times are marginally faster with the Thar rear-wheel drive. Mated to the engine is the same 6-speed automatic gearbox. It's a torque converter unit. This one does not like to be rushed either. There has been no change to the automatic transmission for the rear-wheel drive, so the gearing and ratios remain the same. It is a brisk and peppy car and you really appreciate Mahindra not choking their engines for efficiency. Performance is something they really offer. A bit of fuel efficiency would have been appreciated because over the whole day that I've been driving this car, I have struggled to get that number over the 7, 7.5 kpl. If I'm being really gentle on some patches, then maybe it touches the 8 kpl mark, but overall it hovers around that. The four-wheel drive 2 returned only 7 kpl in the city in our tests and the rear-wheel drive was expected to have bettered that number. However, Mahindra seemed to have a bit of a helping hand here. Now to help with fuel efficiency, Mahindra has also installed a auto start-stop function on this. And to be honest, it is in the most seamless features. In fact, in stop-go traffic, in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, you do tend to turn it off because it's just not as seamless and as smooth as you'd want. It is a bit hesitant and it's not at all something that goes really well and flows with your overall driving style. It does feel a bit intrusive. However, if fuel efficiency is something you value a lot, Nikhil has been driving the Thar with the smaller diesel engine. The Thar RWD is offered with the diesel engine, but it's not the 2.2-litre one you get with the four-wheel drive. This one is a four-cylinder 1.5-litre unit from the XUV300. Power stands at 117 horsepower, down from the larger engine's 130 horsepower. Max torque, however, is 300 newton meters here too. So, does a smaller engine mean a big step backwards? The Thar rear wheel drive's 1.5 litre engine is slightly down on par to the larger hearted Thar, but in terms of torque, both engines make an identical 300 Newton meters. And fact is, in low speed city driving conditions, this engine just doesn't feel like a compromise. Power delivery is very friendly, you get easy access to power low down in the rev range. In fact, this engine makes 55% of its peak torque available at just 1000 RPM. What that means is fewer gear changes and a very easy going experience around town. In on off throttle situations, you will find the power to cut a bit sharply, but that's something you can get used to. The engine's ready power does reflect in the in gear timings. The Thar RWD and 4x4 are almost identical in the run from 20 to 80 kph in third gear, and it's actually the RWD that's quicker from 40 to 100 kph in fourth gear. However, the more powerful Thar 4x4 is faster in flat-out acceleration to 100 kph. Even so, the Thar RWD makes for a happy cruiser. There are differences in performance the faster you go, but they're not as large as you'd expect. This one doesn't feel quite as free when you're going faster, but when you want to maintain a steady cruise at 80 or 100 kph, this engine does the job surprisingly well. 
The 1.5 engine also scores quite well on refinement and is just a shade noisier than the 2.2. Of the other things, the Thar RWD channels power to the rear wheels via a 6-speed gearbox. The Thar rear wheel drive 6-speed gearbox is quite nice to use. It doesn't require all that much effort and even clutch effort is pretty well judged. It's just that this gearbox has very long throws. So in case you want to slam in a quick downshift like this, at times you will find that your fingers brush against the buttons on the center console. What will make the Thar RWD diesel really enticing is its price tag. That sub 4 meter length and sub 1500cc diesel engine qualify it for excise benefits available to small cars. Even with this tempting drop in price, you have to wonder if the Thar rear wheel drive actually fits into your lifestyle. Will it really be a city friendly alternative to a like priced compact SUV or a mid sized SUV? You see, those models are more convenient in terms of uh, steering effort, in terms of how they are to park, in terms of visibility, and are significantly better in terms of ride comfort. The Thar rear wheel drive, as good as it is in the city, it still isn't an ideal city car. And with that, back to Jai for the rest of the Thar RWD experience. What is also unchanged is the ride quality. Well, it has always been a bit of a bumpy car and things with this are no different because you have the soft suspension that takes on bad roads very well but you have heavy components attached to it, chunky tires, and that makes the overall experience a bit jittery. It's constantly busy, it's moving about. Now, even in the city where the roads are well paved, you still have the small cracks and the small bumps that come through, and they sort of just jolt you around. And on highways, you have the undulations that sort of move the car around a bit too much if you press it too hard. But that said, the stability is not too bad because of the nice and wide track that it has, uh, as opposed to the Scorpio Classic that has a narrow front track, and that means you have that top heavy feeling. This thing doesn't really wallow about, but yes, over 100, 120, you will start to get a bit nervous. Now, the other thing that has marginally improved on the Thar two-wheel drive is the steering. It has been a bit lighter. Now, when I say lighter, I mean lighter in relative terms, lighter compared to the four-wheel drive version. It's still not Hyundai light, which means getting out of tight spaces, especially at low speeds, will require some muscle. The chunky all-terrain tyres and heft in the steering make three-point turns a proper workout. In corners, it will dive, it will dip, it will make its weight felt. So yeah, it's not really a corner carver in that sense. What the Thar can't do wrong is off-roading, even without a four-wheel drive. Now, even though this is a two-wheel drive variant, it still is a Thar at the end of the day, which means it can tackle a fair share of bad roads. And by bad roads, I mean a fair amount of off-roading as well. Unless you're on something really extreme that absolutely needs four-wheel low or four-wheel high, this thing goes pretty much everywhere because these wide, chunky tires, they're all-terrain tires, so you have a good amount of grip as well. The engine calibration is also very good in that you have a good amount of grunt at the low end of the rev range, which means torque is available in plenty and that helps you get up very easily and of course you then have the design with incredible approach and departure angles a good amount of ground clearance as well and the suspension can take on pretty much everything you throw at it so yes it is pretty capable yes it's not an off-roader out and out like the four-wheel drive version but it still is very very good Mahindra has packed in hill descent control too and there's also an ESC based brake lock differential and you also have these pages in here. It says Adventure Statistics, where you can see your rough road performance. I mean, it's not really hardcore stuff, but you do get a bit of information here. And yes, it is sort of an ode to the Thar name. I mean, this one is primarily for the city, but it does feel at home <laughs> when the tarmac ends. The other good things that are unchanged from the four-wheel drive is, of course, the design. Now, how do you identify a 4x2 Thar? You don't have a 4x2 badge on the back. You have nothing else on here that says you have bought the version without four-wheel drive. So that's a good thing because you still get those superb off-road looks. You have that butch styling. So there's no real compromise in that sense. 
and it still manages to attract people. There are people honking and telling us that the car is good, that the color is good. And that's the thing, you know, it's been three years almost that the car is out and it still has people smiling. It still has people waving, people showing the thumbs up that you've made a good choice. I don't know what it is. It just has this sort of affection that it gets from everyone. The new paint shade did get a few people talking, but on the contrary, the interior had fewer changes still. On the inside, things are not too different. You have the same layout with the same features. The switch gear, low down on the center console, is a bit different. You have toggle style switches now. That's a nice touch. And of course, you don't have the four-wheel drive lever, which means some space here has been freed up. And that has given rise to a cubby hole that can be used for your wallet. However, I would have liked a few things to be added, maybe a Type-C port, wireless charging. What's also not there is the dead pedal. That was a complaint we had with the older automatic version as well, and they haven't rectified. So you basically just have some space. It's just like a hollow cavity, and you try and get your foot comfortable. But to be honest, a dead pedal is an absolute must in an automatic. Space in the back is only good for two. If you cram three there, they're not going to be comfortable. And speaking of the boot space, well, if it's a boy's trip, it's going to be fine. But if you have girls with you, I think it's going to be a big problem. Someone's going to have a fight. However, the key here is pricing. The Thar rear wheel drive starts at 9.9 lakh rupees for the diesel manual AX trim and goes till 13.49 lakh rupees for the petrol auto. The petrol is a good 2.3 lakh rupees less than the four wheel drive variant, but it is the diesel with the tax benefit that has cut costs by a whopping 4 lakh rupees. And that is what's going to open up the Thar to an even wider set of audiences and increase its value quotient significantly. So if you've always wanted one, if you've liked the boot styling, if you've liked the personality and the character that it has, and you don't really care about off-roading and the price was a bit of an issue, this one is going to make a lot of sense. And if you really like it, you better hurry up because you know how the waiting periods can get on this one. But of course, we'd love to know your thoughts. So do comment below in the comment section what you think about this Thar, what do you think about the downsized engine, what do you think about the missing four-wheel drive? And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Autocar India channel. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up as well.